Hey guys, today we are going to talk about some of the strangest playmats in Magic the Gathering and how they came about. So, let's talk about this playmat, which was Grand Prix New Jersey, November 10th to the 12th, 2006. Back then, what you would have is you would have sponsorships, and those sponsorships would put themselves on the playmat, and that would be one way you could recover some convention fees. Now, this playmat seems kind of odd in how it's put together. As you can see, there are more sponsorships than there is artwork. And the artwork is kind of lackluster. They had Stuffy Doll and Sarah Avenger. And then the five mana symbols on the top. It didn't seem like anyone put time into it although they have gave very interesting in in my opinion as a graphic designer they did a good job putting everyone's logo in the middle however the two sides don't really make sense and just the overall percentage of playmat covered by logos is a lot maybe they need really needed the money but at the same time it's a little it's a little strange for you to represent that many companies, all of them being competitor, competitors of one another on the same playmat. Talking about the Grand Prix playmat, I'm pretty sure, yes, this is from Past Times. Past Times has a very interesting history with GP. Some of the people, I've never been to a Past Times GP, but the comments on Reddit may indicate they are not operated in the best way possible. So Past Times came with this playmat for Grand Prix Indianapolis in 2012. Witches of the Coast found out and I believe they pulled this playmat. Therefore, it is extremely limited, maybe semi-valuable. I would be shocked if Wizards of the Coast allowed this playmat to be made as we will talk about a later playmat that the artist himself pulled from production. So interesting artwork. You can see that there are is a goblin, an angel, what looks like to be Chandra, Lily, and what looks like to be an elf, as well as a dragon. They obviously commissioned the artwork and this was the style they felt was appropriate. Now, of course, there are little children who also play at Grand Prix as w with their parents or by themselves, and this would not be appropriate for those children. So I don't know who came up with this concept, but it's not appropriate at all. Next, I don't dislike this playmat. I just don't get why anyone would want it. It's very bland. Like, yes, it's Nico Bolas's horns. Yes, it's kind of like a land. It's like a piece of artwork, which is a land. And people like, people love playmats that are just pictures of lands. But it really does not do it for me. I feel like it's not, I mean, I, it's everything combined, right? It's the small symbols, the Magic Gathering, the Wizards of the Coast logo, the Ultra Pro logo, and then the Warvy Challenger logo on the four corners. It's the fact that there is not really a focus point to it. The focus, I guess, is the sun in the middle, but that's the sun. There's no characters. There's no... It just doesn't, to me, it doesn't feel like a complete playmat. It feels like something is missing. Like if you had Nico Bolas and you just threw Nico Bolas in here, I, it would be an excellent playmat. And I, that's the key. That's the key. As an artist, you know that it's kind of like they cut Nico Bolas out and this is what is remaining. There's something missing in the center of this playmat that should be there, but it is not. And that is the emptiness that I get from the playmat. Next, we get this image. Uh, this image is obviously very controversial. It is Lily and Chandra. It actually is a rendition of another image I'm going to show you right after. One of the interesting parts about this playmat is 
the original version of it, this one is made by a different artist, was made by the artist who does Chandra and does Liliana. So it's kind of got the official feel, right? It's the IP. It's the intellectual property of Chandra and Liliana, which Wizards of the Coast owns. And that one has an interesting story. But from that playmat, we got a lot of playmats like this. This is not the only one. You can Google it and you will find lots and lots of playmats. So this Chandra with Lily, because the original artist drew his playmat, a lot of other artists seeing the sales were probably very high, did a rendition of it. It's kind of like fan art and it got that cult following where I have seen this from in my local game stores. I've seen this playmat as well as the the playmat by Steve Argyle. Argyle. Obviously I butchered his name. But here is the original playmat where I would say I've seen this at least at two different local game stores and where I live. And this original playmat is extremely popular. You can go to a GP, and I guarantee you will find about five to ten of these there. And you can go to your local game store and players, people I know, have this playmat. I don't own it because I felt like it was taking off the market. A big deal was made and then the original artist. So this person who made it, this playmat, he is the one who did Liliana of the Veil. Vale. Yes, that very epical, epic artwork. Therefore, this has kind of an official feel to it. And from what I heard, he had to take down this playmat. So Wizard of Coast was not very happy with it. Uh, you can kind of understand why. And this playmat is the playmat that launched a thousand duplicate playmats. It's kind of like fan art. If the original artist drew it and it did really well in sales, you will have about 10, fan, or 10 artists who just do fan art and they want to piggyback on the sales. It happens a lot at anime conventions, right? Where you have an epic piece of artwork by the original art worker, art worker, <laughs> artist, and then a ton of fan art, art, uh, fan art people who just copy it and then do it a little bit different. That is what happened here. And uh, yeah. All right, moving on to this playmat. This playmat is currently on sale at David Adams for like I want to say $10, $11. It is for GP Cleveland. So we all know Cleveland is the home of the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. But this is just not great. You can see the electric guitarist, one for the white mana, one for the blue mana, one for the black mana, the red and the green. I have no, I really don't know what happened here. Uh, in terms of art concept, like what were they going for? They obviously have a dragon, they obviously have the guitars, they obviously have, a, maybe that's the building the convention is at. And yeah, and that was that. And then they threw a dragon in, but the background doesn't look, it looks like these are just separate images, right? It looks like the guitar is separate. It's like a PNG of the guitar, and then it's a PNG of the building, and then there's like a second building, and then it's a PNG of the dragon, and then it's a PNG of the background. So overall, it is a interesting piece in art novel, or as I call artwork I don't like, avant-garde. That is what I call, call artwork I don't understand, avant-garde. Anyway, last playmat, let's talk about this last one. Now, I have to explain this. Back in the olden days of 2011, which is interesting, what happened was if you hosted a GP, such as GP Atlanta, you would get all those sponsorships and each sponsorship would have a little you know, logo and you would pay a random artist that was not, I mean, you got to choose whatever artist you wanted and you got to make your playmat. And the playmat was whatever you wanted it to be. So you had some very interesting playmats. I only use this as the example 
This is from Phoenix Games. You can kind of tell their logo is bigger than everyone else's. But you see uh, some names that you can recognize. You would see Strike Zone, Pastime, The Game Academy, Star City Games. The artwork that they commissioned, some of it was very interesting. This Phoenix, for instance, I just don't feel like it was well done. The angel, the wings don't seem to be like... So you had a system where these people were given a blank check to do whatever they wanted for the playmat, and that's what they did. And then you slapped, up, you slapped on everyone's logo at the end. I miss those days, but I'm glad that we have more systematic uh, playmats now. Anyway, that's it, guys. Bye.